Hi, I'm Chris Cooper. Welcome to The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. Thanks for joining us. Spring is here, so garden bugs and diseases can't be far behind. Today, Mr. D is here to give us advice on dealing with them. And hostas are extremely popular. Hardy perennials grow primarily for their beautiful foliage. They're easy to grow, shade tolerant, and today we're going to share a little springtime joy and talk about hostas. All that and more is just ahead on The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South, so stay with us. This is a production of WKNO Memphis. Production funding for The Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South is provided by Goodwinds Landscape and Garden Center in Germantown since 1943 and continuing to offer its plants for successful gardening with seven greenhouses and three acres of plants plus comprehensive landscape services. International Paper Foundation. The WKNO Production Fund. The WKNO Endowment Fund. And by viewers like you. Thank you. Hi, welcome to The Family Plot. I'm Chris Cooper. Joining me today is Mr. D. Hello. All right. And Michelle Lockhart is here. Hi. Michelle is a master gardener right here in Shelby County. Thanks for joining me. Glad to be here. All right. Spring is here, Mr. D. Temperatures are going to start warming up here soon. What about bugs and diseases? They're probably on the way, right? Yeah, definitely. Definitely bugs are on the way. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't really be worried, too worried about diseases at this okay. point. I kind of keep, you know, you need to keep, you know, stay alert. Uh, if we have a wet spring, uh, fire blight would oh, probably yeah. be one of the first diseases that we would see with, a, uh, you know, a lot of our pears and a lot of flowering uh, fruit trees, ornamental fruits. Uh, but uh, as far as insects are concerned, uh, you know, very soon we'll have aphid explosions yeah. and uh, azalea lace bugs. If you haven't, yeah. if you haven't already treated your lace bugs with a systemic. Uh, in, in fit back in February, uh, then then you probably will need to do something okay. to, to take care of, out the azalea lace. And what's bug. the name of that systemic? Uh, there's several. Okay. There's several. I'm yeah, gonna, yeah, I'm let's, gonna let's let, call me, some of those me, out. Uh, the, the systemic that you would have used back in the winter time uh -huh. uh, would have been uh, Safari, Marathon, Merit, or Arena. Okay. Um, as far as the products that you can use now, if you haven't controlled them with the systemics, mm -hmm. then dimethoate, orthene, discus, tempo. Diazinon, Electus SC, Decathlon, <laughs> Merit, Tempo yeah. SC Ultra, Marathon, you can still go with that flagship, Dersban 50W, Safari, Arena, and Acelopren. Uh, and this is out of the 2014 model of the UT Red Book. <laughs> Good. This, this is <laughs> updated. New, inf new yeah. information. That's right. That's right. Also, Eastern Tent Caterpillars, we'll probably yeah, start I seeing them fairly those. soon, yeah. yeah. Uh, especially on the, the uh, the fruits again, yeah. the the uh, the ornamental uh, fruit, flowering fruit trees uh, like uh, uh, wild cherries yeah. and and uh, you know Bradford pear yeah. and, and any of those kind of things. Uh, and you usually find those what right in the crotches, right in the limb crotches, yeah. in the limb yeah. angle, uh, as opposed to the fall webworm, right. which are really summer fall webworms. <laughs> start okay. the fall webworms will, will probably hit us around the first of June. Okay. And we'll have them all summer. And those webs are out on the ends right. of the limbs. But these uh, eastern tent caterpillars, uh, the the they usually migrate to the uh, to the limb crotches right. and the, the limb angles and, and they'll they'll build webs and and during cloudy days they'll go back to the webs and you know okay. at night and uh, when they're small, you can, well, actually BT works on them any time, but, okay. but they have to actually ingest yes. the BT, okay. uh, Bacillus thuringiensis, which is Dipel or Javelin or, or some of the others yeah. that are out there. They have to ingest that to kill them. It's a stomach poison. Uh, What's the best way to do that? We've had somebody ask that. Uh, probably with a hose-in sprayer yeah. if it's a pretty good-sized tree. You know, you use a hose-in sprayer. Uh, but when the, if you can catch them when they first hatch, uh, the oils, there's a horticultural oil will take them out. You know, you'll clog up their breathing tubes and, and they'll okay. die if you can catch them when they're, when they're real small. Okay. That same list pretty much of insecticides I mentioned for the azalea lace bugs will also take out the eastern tent caterpillar. Okay. Uh, insecticidal soap is another, yeah. another one that works pretty good, especially on the younger caterpillars. Okay. The smaller the caterpillar is, the easier it is to kill. The easier it is to kill. Yeah. 
big ones, sometimes you have to use two bricks. <laughs> two bricks. <You> know, <laughs> Move your thumbs out your of thumb, the way, right? Watch your thumbs. That's right. That's right. <laughs> now, will they actually stress out the tree? You know, they, they, can, they can totally defoliate a tree, and, and the trees that, I've never seen them kill a tree. The okay. uh, tree will put back out, and I've seen them totally defoliate, especially wild cherry trees. They okay. love you know, wild cherry trees. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they're unsightly, and, 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 and then if you have several of those in your landscape, you'll have those adult, or the fully grown larvae yeah. migrating everywhere. If you lean your hoe or your shovel up against a your shed, they'll build cocoons between your shovel and your house. You know, they're very quickly, they'll, they'll be everywhere as they're looking for a place to, to build their, you know, to, yeah. to cocoon. And, yeah, I used to see them on the sidewalk, just kind of hanging, you know, from a what, silk thread almost, you know, from trees and things. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah. yeah, so that time is almost coming. Or you could, can you just open up the little the little webbing and let the birds, when the birds that, get in there? Disturb the web, that, that will help. That will help, but if the sun's shining and if it's pretty, they're not in the web. They're not in the web. They're right. not in the right. web. Right. But even if, uh, it, so you know. Right. But when they first, if you catch a rainy day or something like that, and and they, and you can tell if they're in the web or not. You know, they're there. Yeah. Uh, you, you can certainly open it up, and predators will get. It'll help the predators have access to them. Right. Uh, of course, you know, growing up in the country, I can remember. Uh, someone trying to burn no, them out. So don't we definitely do don't advocate that you try don't to. Don't do that. You know? It's a good way to catch your house yeah. on fire. Yes. And, and it d definitely damages the tissue of the tree. Yeah. It probably does, the fire probably does more damage than the eastern tent caterpillar does yeah. eating the leaves. I'm sure. You know, so because it burns the bark and that opens you up for other infections and, and things like that. Yeah, so we definitely don't, don't want don't that. Don't do that. Don't get, don't no get an oily rag on the end of a long <laughs> pole and set it on fire. You're, you're going to damage other other things. Yeah, we don't want to do that. And any, any other bugs that we need to know about? What, what yeah. about what about ants? Ants yeah. are something that when it warms up that uh, you know they'll they'll start coming in and I've, I've got a little bit of information oh, on ants good. here. Okay. Uh, but and I, and I would use a, a, a bait okay. for the ants rather than the uh, the insecticides. Okay. Uh, I've got a whole list of those here somewhere. Uh, you know spiders and things like uh, that yeah. is also going to be a problem but on the ants, uh, uh, indoors uh, go with uh, uh, you know c combat ant killing gel is a good one. Hot yeah. shot, ultra liquid ant bait. Uh, you know, outside you can use Amdro yeah, or or Spectricide Ant Shield, uh, uh, Hot Shot, Max Attrax Ant Bait. You know, those are some good ones for out outdoors. You can go with barrier sprays that contain bifenthrin mm -hmm. or beta cyfluthrin or lambda cyhalothrin which are the synthetic pyrethroids and, you know, that barrier yeah. sprays around the outside of your property. But, uh, you know, follow, you know, clean up, you know, don't have places, that, you, know, you know, be sure that you follow good sanitary practices, clean up, don't give them a lot of uh, other things to oh, okay. eat other than the bait oh, that, that you're yeah. providing them. And um, uh, you need to be careful using these insecticides if you have pharo ants, because uh, hmm. pharo ants, if you spray, Many times it just causes them to move. Wow! So you need to know what kind of ant that right. you've got. Identify what kind of ant that you've okay. got. Okay. And quickly, um, has the cold weather had any effect on act ant activity that we know of? You think? You, you hope when you have a real cold winter like we've had that it will reduce insect populations. Don't count on it. It's been my experience. Don't count on it. <laughs> don't you count know, on don't it. He count says. On it. No, you just better, better be ready. Wow. Get your sprayer cleaned out. Get it cleaned out mm -hmm. and get it ready to go. That's right. That's right. Wow. All right, thank you, Mr. D. That was some great information. Okay, most welcome. There are a number of gardening events going on in the next couple of weeks. Here are just a few that might interest you. All right, Ms. Cheryl, let's talk about hostas. All right. Everybody likes hostas, beautiful foliage, okay? So what do we need to know about hostas this time of year? Well, they're hardy, herbaceous, okay. 
perennials, as you know. They're mm -hmm. easy to grow. Uh, they are starting to pip up now. Okay, which are they is, doing it now? Yes, okay. sir, Just uh, which excites me and probably every other hosta grower uh, to see them coming up. I look forward to their beautiful leaves if they start to grow and uh, I walk around my garden. I <laughs> make sure that the garden is clean, mm -hmm. uh, which helps keep away pests, slugs, um, snails. So I keep the mulch off of my hostas okay. and um, if I use a mulch, I use a light covering of a mulch or um, soil conditioner or pine bark, pine bark or pine needles, okay. which helps deter slugs and snails. Okay. And even though some people may protest, I also like to use bug getta, which okay. helps use it now while there's nothing else for the snails and slugs to eat uh, to help keep those populations down. Or there is a um, more organic chemical, oh, yeah. is it yeah. Naria? I think it's what it's called, it's uh, I iron potash. You help okay. me with that. Yeah, okay, it's um, new one to me. Um, it's on the, I saw it at the big box stores. Okay, okay. Um, it, I would wait just a little while before I would start to divide my hostas. Okay. You want them to have a first flush of leaves, but now anytime the soil is workable, you can divide your hostas. If you divide them in the spring, then they are, they won't be quite as big. Mm -hmm. If you wait until the fall, like when it's not quite so hot, hot <laughs> August or September, you can divide them a little harder then, double in half or maybe in quarters. Okay. Now, since we're talking about dividing, now how do you do that? Do you use uh, you know, a spade, a trowel, your hand, or how do you go about dividing your hostas? I take my pots. I grow many of my hostas in pots in because pots, okay. I have issues with voles. Okay. <laughs> the nasty little devils in the garden. And, right. that, and good gardening practices will help keep away the voles. Okay. Um, I would take my pot, dump it out, cut the hosta. I have a knife. I use okay. an old knife. And uh, please remember to keep your tools clean. You mm -hmm, can use a mm -hmm. bleach. I um, like that shovel back there. <laughs> A shovels can be used, but the bottom line I is said, to unlike that shovel, unlike it's not it. clean. Oh, that oh. shovel is not clean. Keep your tools <laughs> clean. If you use a bleach solution between uh, going from hosta to hosta to hosta, you can help uh, eliminate uh, diseases between your hostas. Okay. Uh, hosta virus X is the most yeah I've heard that widely dreaded disease. Yeah. It cause it can be. You can see it in your hostas if they have a bleeding between the veins. Mm -hmm. It looks like if you had watercolor paints and you drop that on, on the paper, you know, and it kind of bleeds out. You'll see that in the veins of your hostas. Is this a virus? It is. It's a virus. And it also yep. causes the leaves to kind of like pup, pucker and crunch up. And you can obviously see that the plant is diseased. Mm. If you have a diseased plant, destroy it. Do not divide it. Do not share it. Get right. rid of it. Don't compost Replace it. Replace it. Yeah, Do not compost it. it. Mm -hmm. Throw it away. Good. So I uh, just divide them. Look for the divisions in the plant itself. You might want to take the dirt off, wash all the dirt off, and you can see the divisions and cut it between the roots and between the divisions and then repot it in a pot. If you've bare rooted it, you want to get good soil, good uh, potting soil in the mm -hmm. pots. The, you want to make sure your soil is light, so you can add um, a little soil conditioner to it, maybe some humus, something to keep the soil light. Mm -hmm. uh, put a little cone shape, put your hot roots down over that cone, and then put in the soil. Keep it even with the level at the top of the dirt. Don't bury them too deep. All right. And then water it, and then put a little more dirt in, and water it again, and let it grow. Well, listen to that expert here. <laughs> that would work for That's a lot of good. things, I think. Obviously, yeah. that would probably, yes. That would yeah. probably be good for fruit trees and everything yeah, else. Yeah, I think it did just about everything else. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. And in the ground, you want to make sure if your soils are really heavy and compacted, you want to add uh, some soil conditioner, good. some well-rotted maybe leaf mold, compost, um, aged... Um, Oh, manure, manures, manure, yeah, thank yeah, you, yeah. Uh, to any the kind soils. Of, any kind of organic matter. Correct, really, yes. Uh -huh. And nope. add to your garden soil, <laughs> okay. mix it all together, 
You want to make sure that your holes, when you plant your hostas, they don't grow real deep. You okay. use, wider is better than deeper. Maybe wider, about a foot deep, deep. wide. Depends on how large your hosta yeah. is. That's what we talk about you, with trees. Yeah, sure exactly is. Exactly the same thing. Mm -hmm. If you have a bigger hosta, you would probably want a wider right. hole. Right. If you have many hostas, you'll want a littler hole. Plant your minis to the front of your flower beds or, even better yet, minis look beautiful in pots. Uh -huh. They look beautiful in troughs. Now, and they. Let me ask you this. Oh, you're doing good. Do you have to divide your hostas, though? No, you don't. You a don't lot have of people to. never divide their hostas. Okay. Uh, but some of us like to share our hostas. And if if your hosta, if you know it does not have a disease, if it doesn't okay. have foliar nematodes, if you're sure of that, or if it doesn't have hostavirus X, by golly, <laughs> sure. divide golly. that hosta sure. and yeah. share it with a neighbor. Share That's it. a great way to make a new friend is to share your hostas. They're considered the friendship plant. Okay. Now look, uh, while we have a little time left, what are some hostas that grow well in that area? Do you know of any? Uh, yes, sir. I okay. sure do. Yeah. Thank you for asking. Okay. Um, my personal favorites are the blues, okay. but hostas, as you know, are people buy them for the leaf color or the leaf shape or the size possibly, or the, either from the minis, which could be like a Venusta, or to the huge, which could be Empress Wu. A giant hosta that is very beautiful is Blue Angel, okay, which is a that. beautiful cascading mound of blue-gray leaves. It has beautiful, long-lasting flowers and that are lavender to near white, and that a blue hostas are better situated if you Sight them in morning sun or just a little more shade. As I said, hostas are shade tolerant. Okay. They do shade like sun. Tolerant. That's why I grow them. That's why we grow them because yeah. they shade live in the tolerant. shade. Don't right. They? They, they do like sun, but they don't like a in the middle of, of your yard, July, 100 yeah. degree heat. They will just immediately, they will begin to burn out. And now, you can, you just, can you name us a few more? Yes. I think we're out yes, of time yes, here. yes. So we would definitely want to get a few more of those names out there. All right. 2002 Hosta of the Year is Hosta Guacamole. Okay. It's a beautiful, guacamole. attractive, medium green margin with centers, uh, chartreuse centers. Okay. They could become brighter during the growing season if you're, they're sighted in a little more sun. Right. Uh, it has an ovate shaped leaf, moderately wavy. It's a beautiful hosta. You ought to have it. Okay. Everybody should have that. It's a good growth weight. Mm, I can remember, remember that. Yeah, you can remember that. Hostas mm -hmm. are named after food sometimes, ah, <laughs> people sometimes, places sometimes. Um, another, yeah, can you give us one more? Yeah, one a more. good hosta, okay. um, 2010 hosta of the year, first frost. Another beautiful huh, blue, frost. medium to large. Uh, blue green centered leaves with a yellow margin in the spring which changes to a white margin as the season goes on. Um, it's a thick substance uh, hosta. It has pale lavender flowers. It was the 2010 hosta of the year. It's very beautiful. You would love to have it. And this year's hosta of the year for 2014 is a Biqua drinking gourd which is a cupped hosta. It's uh, puckered, very beautiful blue green. You've got to have it. 2014 right. hosta. hosta beauty pageant. Have it. When do they have the hosta beauty pageant? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, we thank Michelle for that information. Yeah, good info. Great job. Good information. Mm -hmm. Now this is our Q and A session. Michelle, if you want to jump right in there with us, okay? Here's our first question, Mr. D. It says, "What is that purple flower plant that I'm seeing along the roadsides?" And guess what? You happen to bring some. Isn't it pretty? Isn't, Isn't that pretty? pretty? Yeah. Came from uh, the roadside. That's How about that? Yeah, that's henbit. That's henbit. Henbit. Mm -hmm. uh, Look at that. Look at the long petiole leaves arranged in a whirl up top. Beautiful purple, pink, reddish uh, flowers. It's in the mint family. Uh, so you have a square stem. Right. Okay. Um, very nice looking plant. And the thing is, when you see a lot of it together along the roadsides, man, they look like wild flowers. Well, the they farmer's fields right now. Yeah. The, the the wheat field, uh, yeah. Not the wheat field, but the, the, where they had corn soybeans uh -huh. last year are almost purple. You know, yeah. they have a purple hue to them. And it it's mostly nice. henbit. There's also yeah. one uh, purple dead nettle that's Closely sometimes, related. sometimes mm -hmm. confused with it. Yeah. Uh, and henbit's a lot easier to control yeah. than the purple dead nettle. So this is what you hope you have. Yeah. And uh, uh, the uh, 2,4-D products mm -hmm. do a good job uh, on, on, on uh, uh, hen bits. Sometimes you might want to go with uh, the ones that have uh, like uh, 
two or three. Yeah, the three ways. The three yeah. ways uh, work pretty good. Isn't that right? You, you know more about yeah, that. Yeah, the I three did. ways work pretty yeah. good for that because they control your broadleaf weeds. And again, this is a winter annual broadleaf weed. So it's so going to go away. It's, it's going to go, go away. away. But anyway. before it goes away, it's going to drop seeds. It's going to drop seeds yeah. for next year. <laughs> for it's, next also, year. it's also going to. Uh, so, I mean, as thick as it gets, it can severely stress your summer perennials or definitely. your summer annuals. That it you've definitely got could. Out there. It definitely could. But it is it is pretty. Not as pretty as your hostas, but it is pretty. So there you have it. It's your hen bit in the mint family. Yeah. All right. Here's our next question. Can I use horse manure in my garden? If so, how much is too much? And Michelle told us that you can actually use composted manures for your hostas. So. What say you, Mr. D? Of course. Of course. You can use horse manure. Of course. Of course, of course you can. It is uh, actually uh, a little stronger than uh, cow manure. Okay. Uh, okay. The analysis of horse manure is 0 0.6, 0 0.3, 0 0.6. So that's the average analysis, right. NPK analysis of horse manure. Uh, and it probably would be really hard to over fertilize. Okay. Going with something <laughs> that weak. Okay. Your most of your benefit is going to come from that, the additional organic matter that's mm -hmm. adding, and I would be sure you know use the dry horse manure. You know, let it compost some. Okay, uh, dry. Dry. Uh, you okay. know, and I'd kind of try to stay away from fresh horse manure, especially in or well, stay away from any of the uh, fresh manures uh, in your garden because of E. coli and yeah. salmonella issues and things like that. Uh, but but it's, if you let it go through a you know composting process okay. and a drying process, then it's it's good good organic matter. Great. Uh, so yes, of course you can use. Of course and, you can. And um, and in in uh, many in many cases, uh, a horse manure is mixed with sawdust. You know, if it's oh. used as bedding oh, or something like that, and 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 that even lowers the nutrient content of it, but it ups the organic matter content of it. Oh, yeah, it's a good product. Good so product. It's a good to product. Use. You know, if you got a horse, sell your horse manure. Oh, Don't sell give it. it away. <laughs> give it away. Yes, yeah, sell it because it's a good product. Because your gardeners would like to use it. Go ahead, Michelle. I just wondered how long you let it compost before you use it. A year, uh, six months. It probably doesn't have to be. It depends on the weather conditions. Mm. You know, it it goes through that process pretty quickly during the summertime, and and you know it may take a little bit longer during the winter time. But uh, you know, just you know, you'll know. You know, if it. It actually, the smell changes, you know. It doesn't smell as much like horse manure, yeah. you know, when it's, uh, it doesn't smell like fresh horse manure anyway. It smells like composted horse manure. So, yeah. uh, just uh, just uh, kind of use your common sense on that yeah. a little bit. And that's a good question, because we get it that is, question. It off. is, it yeah, is. That's a good question. And, and, and I am very, very uh, concerned about folks using the fresher materials and food crops, yeah. because, uh, of the especially E. coli issues, uh, we know E. coli is in manure, and and we've had cases of yes, strawberries yes. that have been fertilized mm -hmm. with you know organic mm -hmm. materials like that that have created problems, and we we don't and and also greens. Okay, here's our next question: What varieties of fig trees grow best here in Memphis? You know, we we need to have Bill Calvert come on here and talk about <laughs> talk figs. about these figs. Yeah, I've got a fig publication here somewhere in my stuff, but it's the uh, the standard varieties yeah. that when I worked down in Mobile, we recommended down there also do well up okay. here. And it's Eastern Brown Turkey, and it's Celeste, and it's Alma. Mm, and here we are. Yeah, is another Fruits one. and nuts, yeah. figs in the home planting. Uh, brown Turkey, Celeste, Green Ischia mm -hmm. is one recommended for Tennessee, uh, Magnolia, and Alma. Uh, now, you know, if you're growing figs, this winter but had to, be, had to be tough Ooh. on them. I like to give you some, some of the varieties are more cold hardy than others. The brown turkey is supposed to survive temperatures down to 10 degrees. We received temperatures yeah. a lot colder than that this year. Yes, we did. Celeste is winter hardy to zero. Mm -hmm. uh, green isky is not as cold hardy as either Celeste or brown turkey, so you know 15 would probably get that. Magnolia is uh, winter hardy to five degrees. Um, if you have fig and you suspect that you may have, have some damage, be sure you give them plenty of time to, to come out this spring mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know, don't be in too big of a hurry to get out there with your pruning shears and all that. Mother Nature probably did a lot of pruning for you. Okay, yeah. All, all you've yeah. got to do is go out and remove the dead tissue, uh, you know, later on. Um, I would suspect the, what, the Breba crop, crop yeah. which is uh, the crop that fruits on last That's year's it. wood, yeah probably aren't going to have any of that this year. Probably yeah, won't have probably. any Breba crop, any early crop this year. All of your crop will be in the fall on current season's growth, you know. So. 
Uh, all right. Just kind of keep an eye on them. And so we keep an eye on them. These varieties are all to, all to do the trick for you. Okay, well, thanks, Mr. D. Thanks, Ms. Cheryl. That's all the time we have for today. Remember, we love to hear from you. Send us a letter or an email with your gardening questions. Send your email to familyplot at wknl.org. The mailing address is Family Plot, 7151 Cherry Farms Road, Cordova, Tennessee, 38016. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. That's all we have time for today. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris Cooper. Be sure to join us next time for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South. Be safe. Production funding for the Family Plot, Gardening in the Mid-South, is provided by Goodwinds Landscape and Garden Center, in Germantown since 1943, and continuing to offer its plants for successful gardening with seven greenhouses and three acres of plants, plus comprehensive landscape services. International Paper Foundation. The WKNO Production Fund. The WKNO Endowment Fund and by viewers like you. Thank you.